I am Federica Bressan, and this is the first episode of the 4i Magazine podcast. Today, we talk about risky asteroids with Paolo Martino, principal engineer for HERA, the first European planetary defense mission at ESA, the European Space Agency. Let's go. Welcome to the show, Paolo. How are you doing today? Hi, Federica. I'm doing great. Uh, busy as always, because we have a very important mission to launch in 2024. And in the space sector, this means basically tomorrow. All right. So is this mission related to risky asteroids? Yeah, indeed. That would be the first time that uh, mankind tries to demonstrate its capability to deflect potentially dangerous asteroids. So it's something in the interest of everybody. All right, but we're talking about potential danger. Like, as of today, there is no asteroid headed towards us that we know about. Indeed, not that we know of. So we're not talking about imminent risk of extinction. However, uh, asteroids present a concrete threat. Uh, I would say comparable uh, to other natural risks and disasters like volcanic eruptions, earthquakes, tsunamis, and so on. So we need to take the matter seriously because uh, maybe asteroids are the one of the natural disasters that we can, more than others, try to uh, foresee and possibly even prevent. So what you're saying is that the likelihood of being hit by an asteroid is not you know, very different than that of a tsunami or a very large earthquake. Indeed, uh, in average, every year the, the Earth is hit by asteroids. And uh, what makes a difference is the size of these asteroids. So the, the Earth is hit very often by relatively small asteroids. We are talking about maybe uh, one meter in diameter. Uh, this happens really every year, but the consequences are not uh, uh, that dramatic because such a, we can say, small asteroid uh, basically creates um, a very nice and fancy firework. The problem is that uh, from time to time, larger asteroids may hit the Earth and uh, those can have worse consequences. Uh, we can say that in general, there is a lot of small asteroids and a few uh, very big asteroids. Now, very big asteroids might indeed uh, create something like the dinosaurs event, but fortunately, this size of asteroid hits the Earth every uh, hundreds of million of years. So we are really not at risk in terms of uh, on, a, on a global scale, let's say. The, the worst ones are the one we can stay in the middle. So 10 meters, 100 meters, uh, those uh, indeed uh, hit the Earth with um, quite high frequency, order of tenth of years or, or hundred of years. So for example, um, a hundred meter asteroid, it's the, the Earth every thousand years, but is big enough to, to wipe out maybe a full uh, nation uh, or depending where it hits, can have really, really dramatic consequences. I mean, the, the energy, uh, that is developed in the impact of such a big asteroid is uh, in the order of tens of megatons. So we are talking about several tens of time the Hiroshima atomic bomb, for example. You're saying that these asteroids just keep hitting Earth, but most of them are small enough not to penetrate our atmosphere. But you say that some do go through. So uh, when was it the last time that we know of, besides the dinosaurs asteroid that an asteroid hit earth that hit earth so that at least it punched a hole in the ground if not you know wiped out some large area of vegetation or animal life well uh sometimes people think about asteroid hitting earth as a, like a projectile that makes a hole in the ground uh, it's not always. Like... I wonder who those people are. <laughs> <laughs> that is not always the case, and uh, and if the, an asteroid doesn't reach the ground, doesn't mean it's less dangerous. I give you an example. Uh, some years ago, uh, I would say now uh, seven years ago, there was a pretty famous incident in Chelyabinsk in Russia, where an asteroid estimated in uh, eighteen to twenty meters enter the atmosphere 
and actually didn't reach the ground. It exploded mid-air, but uh, it released a quantity of energy. Also in this case, um, roughly 30 times, um, sorry, three times the one of the, of the um, Hiroshima bomb. And the shockwave of this explosion mid-air had a lot of consequences in terms of injuries to people. Uh, more than 1,000 people were injured because of the shockwave, for example, shattering the glasses of the windows and the cars. And uh, we've been really lucky that, uh, that this event happened in, uh, let's say, in an area with low population density. If the same would have happened over Paris or London, for example, we could have had much, much uh, more uh, um, effect like injuries and casualties and so on. So, uh, I mean, from time to time, we, we really see these events happening and the danger is real. So we need to be prepared for it. So when we are able to spot an asteroid that is headed our way or so to speak it has no zero chance of hitting earth in some time what can we do is there anything that we can do well indeed the, the scientific community has been uh, studying for several years what we can do and there are several options on the table those depends basically on uh, how much time do you have in order to uh, to try and take some corrective measure uh, the, the main focus and is a technique that uh, we are uh, trying to demonstrate is what is called kinetic impactor, which is a relatively uh, simple concept. It means we are uh, hitting uh, the asteroid with an object, uh, spacecraft, a satellite, uh, basically as massive and as fast as possible, try to uh, nudge him a bit, so deflect it of a tiny, tiny bit, but uh, this nudge, if, um, if takes place in the right uh, moment and in the right place in the orbit of the asteroid, is enough to, let's say, we believe will be enough to uh, dramatically reduce the chances of impact. And uh, this is very important because uh, uh, ESA and NASA and all the world are monitoring all these uh, near-Earth asteroids, and then there is a publicly available uh, risk uh, list of asteroids, which indeed in the next 100 years have, uh, have uh, no zero impact probability. And, and this list uh, already contains uh, roughly 1,200 asteroids to be kept under strict control. So we do need to be ready uh, when it will be the case. 1,200. That sounds like non-zero chance. <laughs> um, let me ask you, so this mission that you mentioned, the beginning of this interview, the one that you're going to launch in 2024, how does it relate to HERA? Is it part of HERA? Yeah, HERA is the mission, is a European component of the mission. Uh, we have an international collaboration with NASA. It's called uh, AIDA, Asteroid Impact and Deflection Assessment. Uh, which consists of two main missions. So we have uh, the NASA mission, uh, which is called DART, is an impactor that will launch in a uh, few months, actually, and uh, will hit this uh, asteroid. It is called Dimorphos. is the moon of a binary asteroid called Didymos. And it's, uh, let's say, it's the chosen target because this moon is roughly uh, 140, 150 meter. So it's it's a perfect uh, Stroman case uh, for the the class of dangerous asteroid I was mentioning before. Uh, it will launch in a few months. Will uh, basically the satellite will will crash uh, into this the Morphos at a speed of about seven kilometers per second, and we believe that is going to. Um, change the period of the orbit of these uh, dimorphos around this main body didymos uh, by a non-negligible amount we are talking about uh, five to eight percent so minutes uh, over an orbit of 12 hours so something you could be uh, even measured from ground then all right but this is not enough. Um, then uh, that's where uh, ESA uh, enters the picture with his uh, HERA mission, which instead is a, is a mission uh, that will rendezvous 
with the, with the system uh, in order to uh, provide complementary uh, analysis and uh, in situ inspection that would allow to let's say um, upscale the the experiment of NASA which is so the, the NASA experiment will be, are we capable of, of hitting an asteroid and will it work? Okay. Uh, in order to uh, gather all the information that you need to actually uh, develop and improve impact models, uh, which are the ones that scientists will use uh, to see if this technique can be applied to other asteroids, uh, you need a detailed analysis of this asteroid. And this, of course, uh, DART uh, has no time to do because this mission is, is very quick. We we'll crash into the asteroid, basically. And so HERA, for several months, will gather information about uh, these dimorphos, like its mass, its shape, its uh, internal structure. And this will allow the scientists to develop and refine models that uh, will allow them to, to then assess uh, other possible threats, whether this technique can be used for that or not. And, uh, and if not, of course, uh, we'll think all together about possible alternatives. I wish we could have an update on this uh, next year or in two years when the ESA mission launches. But for today, I would like to thank you so much for being on the first episode of the 4i Magazine podcast. You've been very gracious with your time. I would like to encourage our audience to check out the ESA website at ESA.int and to check out the 4i Magazine YouTube channel for more episodes of this podcast. I am Federica Bressan and I will see you next time. So long.